everyone. We had about 55 registrants, so I'm kind of assuming there's a few more who are going to be joining us. Thanks uh, and welcome to the Earth Gives Community Commons impact makers that um, I believe I've had the great opportunity to work in the nonprofit arena for about 30 years. So I'm probably got some age on uh, most of you, if not all of you, but um, still thrilled and passionate to be here. So I'm Rhonda Bannard and I am mother to Morgan and Heath. They are both young adults and I'm here because of them. And I wanted to share a little bit about that. So I'm concerned as a mom about their futures and their peers' futures. And um, so, and what they're gonna have to endure because of climate change and what's happening to our world. Uh, so I've decided to dedicate the rest of my time and my abilities to actually work in this arena. This for me is really about community building. I'm a communicator and a community builder and have really done that most of my life. So I started in television news way back in the time machine and I've worked in some sort of PR and marketing and communication storytelling for ever since then. So I'm thrilled to see you here, to meet you. I look forward to getting to know some of you um, even more deeply. I know that there are several folks here that I've had the good fortune of meeting like Hillary and Casey and a few other folks. Um, so it's great to have you all here. Our hope at Earth Gives, we're just a, a, a new startup um, nonprofit is to really build a broader welcoming community of earth givers and that means about where we give our charitable dollars where we use our voice our volunteer hours how we vote how we show up as consumers and in community with one another we seek to build relationships with you as nonprofit leaders with donors on your behalf and with everyday people who seek a way in to be part of the solution and i consider myself one of those people. It was kind of like, where do I start? How do I get active? And so to me, really storytelling around this issue is about how do we bring people like me into the into the fold. Um, I have learned as a mom and as a communicator that the culture you create is through the conversations that you have. So today it is through the power of art and graphics and pictures that we're going to create that culture. And we are thrilled to have Nicole Kellner here to kick off our new series. Um, it's just for nonprofits um, to allow us all to be better at what we're doing. If we can individually and collectively move charitable investment in organizations like yours from just 2% where it sits at today to 4% and beyond, we know that the scale of your missions is possible. So uh, Nicole is going to kick us off, um, yet we truly believe that all of you have incredible ideas. I know some of you are steeped in this work and some of you are just beginning and are really hungry for new ideas and new ways to um, hone your craft. And so we're gonna invite you to um, share your ideas share what's worked for you and ask questions of Nicole because we're so lucky to have her. And what we uh, plan to do is also have quarterly gatherings with the presenters from the first four sessions so that it's just this Q&A happy hour get to meet. So if any of your questions are not answered, we could either, you know, we invite you to put them in the chat because we have the potential to build more programs around them and bring in other presenters on that. So everyone, here's Nicole Kellner. Hi everyone, it's so nice to be here. Um, yeah, really excited to meet you all and answer any questions at the end. So feel free to kind of hear what I'm sharing and tuck any away. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to start by sharing a little bit about my background and how I ended up creating climate art. Um, so it's been a, a real plot twist in my life. I like to think of it as um, I have kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit since I was in college. I started my first business when I was 18 in my college dorm room. 
uh, which was a handbag business. I kind of taught myself how to sew and made these purses that you could use through a plastic pocket um, and just had so much fun with it. I was a finalist for Shark Tank and won the Alibaba Women Empowerment Award and fell in love with uh, being an entrepreneur, basically. Um, and at the time I ended up graduating, I studied advertising, um, which is a degree I did not think I would ever use again, yet somehow here I am basically being an advertiser for <laughs> climate change in a good way. Um, and so after college, I co-founded an after school program to teach kids how to code in New York City, and I did not know how to code at the time. I learned from my co-founders who were teaching me, and I was always one step ahead of my students that were like eight to 12 year olds, and I would then teach them. And I think that experience of the beginner's mindset of having to learn this technical concept and break it down to be able to teach it to young students um, really kind of set me up for success with what I'm doing now as well. Um, and so, uh, I did that for several years and I, at one point for fun, decided to do a zero waste challenge for myself for a month. Um, so I basically lived zero waste in New York city for a month, which was not an easy thing to do. <laughs> And it was my eye-opening experience to the climate crisis. I basically, by the end of the month, realized, you know, <laughs> the world is a little bit on fire and I want to spend the rest of my career figuring out how I can make some sort of difference in the space. Um, but at the time, I was still working at the coding space uh, and had no experience working in climate. Um, and so... Uh, a few years later, uh, the coding space got acquired and I decided that I was ready to figure out how to work in climate. So I spent the next year and a half uh, absorbing as much information as I could in the space. I got really involved in a community called My Climate Journey and started hosting um, these like bi-weekly uh, kind of talks around a certain subject within this community. It was like a lot of like climate tech folks and I would have people vote on a topic that they wanted to hear about and then I would find speakers and I would facilitate the conversation based off of questions people would submit. And I didn't have any subject matter expertise, but I was like, I can facilitate a conversation. And so that was my kind of like way into the space. Um, and so I ended up meeting my first boss through that. He was on one of the panels that I hosted and, um, he, his name's Joel Arman Hoyland. Uh, he runs climate finance solutions, um, which is like a consulting firm that helps companies secure non-dilutive funding like grants to help them scale climate solutions, like a lot of hard tech climate solutions. Um, which this community probably would appreciate a lot, actually. Um, and so I kind of got my foot in the door to the climate space that way and loved working with Joel. I was there part time um, for, I don't know, eight, nine months um, and then started working full time at a climate startup, which was like my, you know, dream come true. I did it. I finally got at a climate startup. Um, and I've worked in operations pretty much my whole career and I got there and I just like, wasn't feeling like I, it was the right fit. I think I wanted to do something a bit more creative, but I didn't have that as like my main background experience and didn't know what that would even look like. And so just for fun. I decided to start painting a watercolor a day for a hundred days. And um, this was a year ago in January. And it started out with me painting a bunch of random things. Like, I think I did one painting about like dry January. I did one about Theranos. I did one about snowman. Like it was all very like cute, fun things. Um, and then 10 days in, I painted about kelp and carbon sequestration and that was like the piece that kind of 
really changed my life, honestly. So I, it was a really simple diagram just showing how kelp sequesters carbon. And I posted it on Twitter. I was posting everything on Twitter. I posted every day, the whole time. And um, at the time I had about 400 followers and it got a hundred likes and I was blown away. I basically was like, wow, I'll do the rest of my hundred days about climate change. Um, and basically it took off from there. I just really found that the consistency and the theme and the simplicity of what I was focusing on, um, resonated with the Twitter world and the climate Twitter community. Um, and every month I was growing by like a thousand followers. And then by the end of the year, I had 10,000 followers. Um, and I ended up quitting my full-time job within four months of starting this like hundred day challenge and have been focusing on making climate art, uh, since last year. And I work with all sorts of organizations and nonprofits, startups, climate VCs, the government to really break down the complex concepts within climate into these simple uh, educational art and um, some things that I have found to be really helpful since starting um, is that most of my art focuses on climate solutions. Um, and when it is portraying a positive message of like hope, those are the pieces that resonate the most. Um, and the ones that are a bit more like about fear or statistics that are alarming, those ones don't stick or share as well. And if they do, they can cause like a negative hate spiral vibe, which is like not the energy that I typically like to communicate. I think that there's plenty of that information already out there and that I found a way to kind of like allow people to feel this like hope and like pause from the eco anxiety to like have the space to feel calm enough to take action. And that's what I really try to strive to do more with art. Um, and like my whole goal is really to use art as like a medium to inspire climate action. Um, and I think like some other things that I found helpful are um, like the simpler, the better, like really the least amount of text, the like kind of a good metaphor of uh like how to check yourself if this is a good enough like communication tool is like could a five-year-old understand this um and I will like screen share in a bit and show you like I have a piece that's like um ha like explain how heat pump works to me like I'm a five-year-old um and things like that do really well where you're just really breaking down the barriers to these complex ideas into a way that anyone can understand it. Um, and I receive feedback from my audience all the time. That's pretty much, you know, my, I, I'd say like Twitter is like more people who are subject area, ex like have some area of like understanding of climate in a way that like they can get these complex ideas already but I share a lot on Instagram as well. And that's where I just have like my normal friends and like those people aren't necessarily climate experts. And so I think that with the communities that you're often working with as well, I imagine you want to make sure that the content you're creating is approachable to the people on both that like kind of Twitter where they understand what you're already like going for, but also like Instagram where people aren't just focused on climate, where they have, you know, there's just so much content there. Um, so making sure that it resonates with both those kind of like dual uh, demographics is something I think about a lot. And I think different content resonates differently on each platform. So I sometimes will tailor a piece, you know, a little differently, maybe I'll like modify it slightly sometimes, but I try to make it universal. So this is like my ABCs of climate change. Um, so I did this one kind of as just like a fun idea to break down a lot of concepts within climate. 
And I didn't totally like think about how, um, you know, it's basically 26 ways to get feedback from people on the internet because there's a lot of different opinions that can be <laughs> felt by this piece, which I think is something that is great, um, but also can be a lot to manage depending on like how much information you're sharing. Like if it's a little bit more like edgy, like, and you're putting a lot of content out there or I do like to stay a bit more on the neutral side of things, but I knew I was including nuclear in there, for example, and I knew there would be some amount of like comment on that. So I always kind of have these um, sensitivities in mind when I'm creating content um, and try to like tread a line of what do I think will be useful without being too polarizing. Um, and this one's done really, really well and reached a super wide range of audience. I think this one got featured in the Washington Post climate newsletter, which was really cool. Um, this one is that like explain how a heat pump works like I'm a five-year-old one using a gnome metaphor. Um, and this one I had the idea for based off of someone's tweet that they kind of like wrote out this concept and then I DM'd them and asked if I could paint it and um, got their permission to do so. And so I think, you know, being in touch with the community that you're working with is a really great way to kind of get these ideas and start those conversations and engage with people and see how you can use visual communications to enhance what you're working on. Um, and I think this might be like one of my most popular pieces. Um, this is the piece that I'm probably the most proud of. Um, it's uh, the potential savings from the IRA. Um, and I, you know, when the IRA came out, I was looking through it and saw there was basically no visuals, um, you know, maybe a graph uh, times, but all black and white, very simple. And um, wanted to make sure that the larger like country could relate to what just happened because it's such a big deal. And I had this vision for creating, uh, you know, a little mini home that shows all the different ways that the IRA can benefit that individual. So I think the relatability of this piece has resonated so much with both, you know, people like my parents who I've sent this to or friends all around the country or local governments that want to share it within like their own communities. Um, and this piece has been really cool because I've spoken to other, you know, governments in different parts of the country as a result of this. And I've helped like tailor um, the benefits to different cities um, so that they can then share this piece with their constituents. Um, so that's been really cool. Um, and this is like a good example of just taking kind of the concepts of the things we're working in every day that we might, you know, not necessarily think of <laughs> like, we're just like, so in it all the time that like, it doesn't even like, basically this piece I really liked because I started thinking about what I'm painting every day and like adding an element of art to the concepts of these renewables and like things that look really gray from the outside, but really are quite magical on the inside and power our world. Um, and people really liked this. And ha I've had someone that requested each one of these as individual prints so that they can just like hang out in their, like hang up in their office as a gallery wall. Um, and then I just wanted to end with the piece that started it all for me, the help uh, and carbon sequestration um, piece. So this was the very first one I did and um, I have a lot of fondness for it. It's, I still think it does the job keeping it simple. That's kind of what I wanted to share and wanted to open it up to questions. Well, I'll kick it off real quick because you said that you saw a tweet and you asked permission to draw into it and it made me think, wow, we can see what some of our 
donors or volunteers or board members are doing and then do something around it, which builds community, right? It invites people in to be part of um, the activation. So um, does anyone have thoughts around doing that or do they think it's a good idea? Nicole, have you done that um, in other ways? Yeah, that's something I try to do a lot where I'll post on my Twitter being like, what does any, what do you want to see me paint next? Or like, I'm always engaging with people who comment on my posts. I'll engage with people that I really admire on Twitter. I think starting those conversations in any way is really uh, meaningful and uh, is a great way to grow community. Um, so yeah, definitely. Happy to chime in. Uh, sorry for joining late here, but my name is Wolf Ryan. Uh, I serve on the board of directors for the Environmental Educators of North Carolina. Um, I'm based in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, and on top of that, I'm also just an uh, independent climate filmmaker uh, and just curious about all the intersectionality of the space and also work professionally at the Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center in Chapel Hill. Um, so just kind of looking at all the fun intersections of climate and art, speci specifically because uh, I coordinate the North, help coordinate the North Carolina Science Festival, um, which is one of the nation's largest science festivals. And this year's theme is full steam ahead. So we're bringing art into the science spaces. Uh, and so always looking for new ways uh, that we can try to incorporate art into oftentimes a STEM space that is lacking a lot of art. Yeah, so cool. Very happy to have you here. Let me know if there's anything I can do to be useful. Those are all things that sound amazing. <laughs> Nicole, um, I love that you're working in a 2D art, like watercolors, and I love the the feeling that it, the vibe that it gives off, and especially with a topic like climate change. Um, uh, I'm curious, um, um, like I'm assuming that you have to uh, scan your images um, to share these digitally, and maybe talk about um, what it's like to work in a 2D visual form versus digital art that uh, maybe is more prolific in, in this realm. Yeah, sense. absolutely. Um, so, you know, I really probably should scan my art, but I take photos on my iPhone <laughs> and it works really well. I've, so I had two projects this year that they wanted to blow up my art to six feet by six feet and I paint on a nine by 12 piece of paper. And so I was like, oh my God, is this even possible? <laughs> um, the answer is yes. And I took my art to an archival scanner um, and she, it's basically like this heavy duty scanner and they were able to blow it up and then I would re-edit it and do everything. Cause I, I do touch ups in Photoshop and adjust the colors in Lightroom and whatnot. And so I re-edited it and I looked at the before with the one on my iPhone and then the after with this like, you know, <laughs> $2,000 scanner. And I texted them to my mom and I was like, I'm thinking about buying a really good scanner. And she's like, which one's the one that got scanned? And I was like, this is wild. I felt, I mean, I don't know if you remember those billboards that were like made, shot with iPhone, um, like iPhone cameras are shockingly good these days and I like that I can do it on the go because I I don't travel that much right now but I do go visit my parents in Pennsylvania and I like to be mobile and not need to like worry about the quality differential if I'm like on the go versus like at my apartment in New York um so I do take photos on my phone and then just um yeah tune everything up on my computer <laughs> and I I made a book this year and I was like wanted to make sure that the quality would be you know good enough for that and it was a eight and a half by eight and a half uh coffee table book and uh yeah it turned out great so that's really like I I make prints as well and those on my website get printed up to 30 by 30 inches for my phone and all the main uses that I need, it works. Hi, everybody. I'm Angelisa Baldwin. I'm the communications director with the Iowa Environmental Council. 
We're based in Des Moines, Iowa, large land state, small population, mighty contributions to climate change, thanks to our ag sector. Uh, very complicated, um, as you've pointed out, and um, a major industry in Iowa. So it has a lot of you know political backing and a lot of political power. So it's really hard to, to get those kinds of messages out there. Um, as a communications professional, um, I'm curious, you know, I'm looking, we follow you on, you know, all the social channels and, and love all of your stuff. Um, I have many really specific questions about, you know, working with you and things. I see commission information. But yes, I am interested when you are working with a group to create a piece for them, and it's a complex process. Uh, you know, lots of information that you need to, to be able to get into a really simple image. Uh, what are some tips or suggestions or how do you best get that information to be able to break it down into those little steps? You know, what's useful for you for bringing a lot of information, you know, to an artist or a designer? Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's really nice to see you and that's a great question. Um, yeah, so usually I like to start with a like simple theme, like that they want to focus on first, um, like one topic. And that's like the project that we'll scope together and we'll make art on together. So I think that, you know, I'm really good at helping my clients like narrow in on like what that one thing is. And then we can like start there. And then, um, well, like once we've got that, I like to have them come up with like some amount of like reference material that I can like read through. Um, so I usually ask for like, if they're, you know, a startup, some sort of like pitch deck, if they're a nonprofit, like what they give to like potential donors, something like resources that I can read through to start to like get a better sense of like other contexts and like synthesize that on my own. Um, and then like the, the best thing that I ask for next is like, uh, a simple sketch of any kind of what they're thinking about, like stick figures, like start with stick figures. Like it really doesn't need to be complicated. Just like start small. And then like, I love to work with them from there so that I just like have a sense of like what is going on in their brain and then like can help them bring that to like more fidelity and come to life. And like, that is, you know, if you're working with the designer, that's like the time that you can then be like, this is what I'm thinking about. Like, can you help? Um, and so, yeah, just like really like not trying to do too much with one thing is like the biggest, um, learning that I've experienced and, um, less text is more always like, I think, you know, a big part of my job when I'm working with clients is like basically being like, how much of this text can we cut out? And like, because the pieces, it sounds like you've seen my pieces, like there's a lot, I try to do mostly visuals and not a lot of text and that's what grabs the eye. And you can tell a story, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. It's like that phrase is a phrase for a reason. Um, and so really trying to hone in on how to use visuals as metaphors more than needing a long essay um, is kind of something that I really like to do. So I have a follow-up to that that's kind of, um, it's, it, it's definitely not meant to be a challenge in any way. I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this. So with that, you know, simplifying the message and making it digestible and um, something that kind of grabs people's attention and makes them think about it in a way that's positive and um, actionable, there's this flip side of um, not oversimplifying an issue, right? You don't want to lose some of the nuance that's really yeah. important. And I, I get that we can't put essays on social media, nor do I want to see that. But um, like with, when you put up the image of the gray things that are green, I saw hydropower and I was like, man, we're trying to get rid of all the dams in the West because we know that they're hugely destructive. And I was just trying to navigate like what, how you would, I guess, how you would navigate that issue. Um, cause sorry, my organization works with communities impacted by mining. Um, and a lot of the communities in the West that are providing the lithium and the cobalt and the um, antimony and the copper that's needed for green energy are um, Native American communities that are having to um, deal with the environmental consequences of not, not responsibly mining these things that we absolutely do need 
for green energy. Um, anyway, that was a long diatribe to say, I, I wonder how you navigate that space. Yeah. Um, it's never easy <laughs> is like the short answer. I think because I'm not an expert in what I am communicating, I think that I'm always learning. And I think that is what has been really beneficial in a lot of ways. And when I was doing that hundred day challenge, you know, most of the time I didn't know much about what I was about to paint the next day. And by the end of the day, I knew a lot more, but I still was not an expert. And so um, I like to think of my art as like my own learning flashcards. And I think that for me, like people aren't necessarily looking at my art for, you know, the, the perfect, like expert detailed answer. It's like a teaser. I think of my art as like a teaser. It grabs you, makes you want to Google more. And like the book that I put out, like, you know, I, I have parents that read it to their, read it with their kids and they like to like explain more because they're often working in climate. And I think of, you know, the, the types of content that I like to put out, hopefully spark enough curiosity to like, maybe have someone Google uh, about this information or this resource that they've never heard of. And so, I mean, you can link to articles that are explaining more once you create the image. So like on Twitter, I always like quote my source and things like that. So I think once you have the visual, you can do kind of a um, caption that has like just the right amount of text that will elaborate on the visual and then link out to the longer like essay style that really tells more of what you're trying to do that could be on like a blog or something like that or a link to your newsletter article that does something like that to promote subscribers um i just started a sub stack so i'm like i'll link out to my sub stack that then has like a longer explanation of you know whatever i'm storytelling about then um so those are kind of some things i've learned over the year that reminds me of something I learned when I was studying martial arts, and that is the more you know, the less you know. So, and certainly I think we would all agree as it relates to climate. I think that in fact, that's what um, some of even the youth climate activists and what I've learned is that we are challenged uh, by this big issue. And so we don't want to address it. We don't want to turn towards it. And I think all of our jobs is to how we invite people to turn towards it and to be a part of it. So, um, Will, I'll get to you in just a sec, but um, we've had the great opportunity to be part of, I don't know if any of you know Seth Godin. He's a New York Times bestseller, 20 books, amazing uh, thinker when it relates to marketing. And we um, had the chance to participate in the Carbon Almanac and share this with a lot of organizations. And it's very graphical and very bite-sized, but it's also deeper in systems change. And it really is about creating community. So having the opportunity to see what he was doing and what we were thinking as part of Earth Gives, you know, really blends together. It's like, how do we invite people in, create um, a welcome at, so to speak, to invite people in to be part of this instead of being Fearful. And this is kind of similar along those veins, but I am interested from a kind of like, you know, impact campaign perspective. Um, you know, you were talking about clients, you know, of, you know, research that has come out and kind of to help visualize data um, in art form. But I'm curious, has there been any movement or like your thoughts on having art be a part of impact campaigns of um, documentaries and films around climate that have been coming out? Um, because I know that, you know, sometimes people don't necessarily want to watch, you know, an hour long documentary or people watch, you know, a climate related documentary and like, this is great, but like, I want more. And so there's organizations that I've worked with, um, like Rare that works with Netflix to do impact campaigns for um, you know, climate related documentary work. Um, but have you done any kind of like impact work for any kind of films? Or do you see that there's a space for that kind of stuff um, in nonprofits that help produce films like that? I'd love to. Yeah, I haven't yet. I um, don't 
have like too many ties to like the film industry right now and I mean I I'm I'm always looking for like new clients and like partnerships and collaborations and I think that would be really cool I mean there's so many documentaries about in the climate space that I love and uh would be honored to make art for as like teaser trailer like getting the word out kind of thing um absolutely and I think uh there's so many ways that art can uh, film is already art so it, adding any more to go alongside it is absolutely great I would love for you to go back to the positive versus the negative yeah um, and what your thoughts are around that and what you've learned from that yeah I had a really big learning a week and a half ago or maybe not even that less than a week ago I don't know if anyone has happened to follow me and saw that I posted about gas stoves last week and it was the day before like the big news cycle really took off about the gas stove versus induction stove debate and I didn't know the crossfire I was walking into and it was a mess um I posted a piece that was basically like a titled like gas is gross and then it had like a little stove that like was green and looked sick from like you know having a gas fire and um uh let's just say like the, <laughs> the like a lot of people that disagreed with that found it and were very mean to me I woke up to 1500 hate comments which was the first time I've ever experienced anything like that in a year or in my life. I mean, <laughs> that was terrible. Um, and so I went on private for the weekend and like, luckily it calmed down and I haven't experienced like this whole week, everything's been normal. So I'm like, whew, glad they didn't follow me and aren't following along with whatever I'm doing now. But I think that the biggest thing I took away from that was around how most of my art is so focused on like the solutions and like generally like positive ways you can make an impact that this was probably like the first almost like you know I kind of know what I'm walking into in some way I'm responding to you know these come and get it slogans that I saw where it's like Republicans posting about like a gas stove and then this like come and get it logo and I was like I'm gonna do like uh, our version of like a slogan that would be like yes it's gross um and I've never really done anything like that and in my head I was like this is fun like I'm just doing like a, a something that will be shareable and I very much believe like it's you know it's, it's terrible the health risks that it gas stoves uh can impact on children like I stand behind that and I created a piece of art that you know, I, I really believe. And uh, even though it was a message that is very important, I think that it struck so much more conversation in a negative way than it did in any way that will create action. Like it, all of the noise canceled out any possibility for a, a conversation at all, basically. And so I think using messaging that can really have that like positive, hopeful tone to it has so much room for meaningful action, meaningful change. Um, and yeah, that's just like, that's where I want to spend my time. Like I just can't get too mixed up in the other side or I get burnt out. And I think that that's like so much the case with our space like we need to make sure that we're preserving our energy we're already working in something that is really stressful and long term if we're depleting our energy by engaging in uh, you know fighting with trolls like on a daily basis like that will just like burn us out and then we need to be doing this work and if we're not energetically capable of doing it then like that's you know it's a, a vicious cycle so I think um, that's my, my perspective on kind of how I approach it. Um, so my name is Bethany and I work with Eastern Shore Land Conservancy and we're a nonprofit based in Maryland, specifically on the Eastern Shore. 
Um, and we work with a lot of landowners to put easements on land or just on private or public property so that to help uh, mitigate climate change because the more wild plants that we have preserved, the less we can lose. Um, so the question that I had asked was, how do you really start a conversation about climate change, especially like directly addressing climate change without having it just immediately boil into a very negative conversation and a very partisan conversation? Yeah, that's, you know, something that we, we everyone in this room, I'm sure thinks about, and I definitely do. And um, I think even the way that you described what you're doing when you're talking about um, mitigation and like that, you know, I think the way that we're able to focus on the way that um, the benefits of what you're working on help the overall economy and health of our, you know, workforce, our children, our community, like the, the benefits that just are facts, like those are the things that are able to kind of like get through a little bit without it being such a like <laughs> political debate. Um, and there's like a lot of research around that I have seen. I think that's basically like, you know, the the way that we talk about how, um, I forget which organization I worked with at some point that told me about how um, when they focus on like the health benefits of, you know, uh, of the work that they're doing rather than, um, talking about how it's like preventing climate change, like the the positive um, community benefits and like the jobs that are created and things like that are really like that kind of messaging resonates with like all different parties. Um, so I think those are some ways that have been helpful. Bethany, I'm certain that we're gonna be getting into uh, the power of words and language and framing and all of that. and. Well, you're right, the Clio Institute is amazing and the founder, she's a total badass, love her. Um, I might be putting my friend Sandy Price, uh, Dr. Price on, on uh, the spot, but I wanted to have her weigh in as somebody who's been a professor, um, a lobbyist on behalf of uh, nonprofit organizations and doing many, many, many things in this space um, to talk about framing and um you know positioning because we can to nicole's point we do exhaust our time and our energy around debate versus how do we advance our missions how do we build community and advance our goals and so uh words um hold so much power and i'm wondering sandy if you might have a, a little bit of a riff on that I'm not sure you're going to want me to because I have a drywall guy and the dishwasher going behind me, but if you can hear me, um, I, I really was impressed right off the bat by the fact that um, all of the data points, if you want to use them like that, for the creation of the slideshow that we saw, which by the way, if you're willing to share that, I'd really love to look at it more slowly, Nicole. Um, but she basically collected, it's like, it's like just in time information. She made her artwork, she framed her message based on what people are thinking right now. And I think that's a way to be a constructive part of the discussion. She's basically doing education and she's taking her, she's taking her target students where she finds them. And the minute she said that, I'm just like, yes, go Nicole. So um, from a framing perspective, I don't have anything to offer beyond that. That's for, for the way our world moves so quickly, for the amount of disinformation that's out there. Uh, I think that the, the reason she caught on is because she is responding to the now moment where people's heads are. There you go, Nicole. Kudos. Woo, woo, woo. That's get an awesome. A in my class that you didn't take. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that's right. Um, the, the many classes for nonprofit leaders and whatnot. Well, um, 
Nicole put in the chat where you can follow her. We're going to be posting um, this and sharing it back out to you and how you can follow Nicole and go to her website and, and all that good stuff and give her shout outs. We're definitely advocates here at Earth Gives about lifting one another up to um, advance the work that we're all doing because we are an ecosystem that's all uh, interconnected. I wanted to offer up, um, you know, one finally, um, final consideration is our signature event is a, a giving day that we're working to really scale across the entire country um, to focus attention more on your missions and your work. And so if you're interested, there's um, opportunities that we'll include in the follow up email about where you can just say, hey, I'm interested to potentially joining us for Earth Gives Day, which comes up in October, October 5th. Um, and it's all about creating a community of earth givers, like we said, and it's not just about donations. We hope to really expand it into thinking how we show up as human beings. And so I'm going to challenge you to do this. Notice what grabs your attention. What is it that brings you in that makes you stop? Um, what is it that makes you then act? So does something just grab your attention and then you move on? Or does something grab your attention and actually make you act? And obviously in advertising lingo, it's, you know, eight images, messages, you know, um, before action actually happens. I don't know if that's been modified since the old days, but definitely um, something to think about. I know we'll be doing more on storytelling and donor relations in the future, and so there's a lot more to come, and we welcome all of you to say, this is what I need, or this is what I'd love to um, learn more about, or this is what I'd love to come and present on. So um, don't hesitate um, to do that. You can reach me at Rhonda at Earth Gives. Dot org. I'm assuming you all got my email this morning for the Zoom link. And so if there's any communication ideas or things that you want to talk about, and as I mentioned, the, the women's initiative separate from the nonprofit initiative, if you're interested in joining that, um, please do. And thank you, Nicole. We really appreciate you. We're excited for your amazing work. Um, I look forward on Twitter all the time and really, really, really um, am excited for what you're doing to bring this very uh, difficult and multi-layered um, issue to the fore so pe more people can get involved. So any final thoughts, Nicole? No, feel free to stay in touch. If you ever want to work together, shoot me a note. Um, you'll, Rhonda will share my information. Um, yeah, really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. I'm going to uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon.